Hey, welcome back to Milton Daily Homes. It's Chuck here. And if you want to meet me at Starbucks, talk a bit more about your plans. The link's over there. Just click the calendar, click the time you want to come in, and uh, we can have a great conversation. If you think about buying a home, we can talk about the extra costs involved. If you think about selling your home, there's a lot of things you can do to prepare there. And then also, if you're looking to invest in real estate, and unfortunately, we don't find a lot of great investment properties in Milton, but there are some other areas and there's some definite criteria and some things to consider if you're thinking about doing that. So let's get to today's list. We got a list, I think a 25 is a big list. First one up is 741 Woodward, number 20, it's at 248. And uh, it looks okay inside, just a couple, uh, a little bit more original elements here. Uh, I do like the flooring in this room. The kitchen looks okay. It's on baseboard heat though. You can see the baseboards right here. And, uh, and that could present a problem because I look at something like this if we go up a little bit further. Now the nice thing about that complex before I go much further is they have an in-ground pool and a party room which is something you don't find with a lot of the condo townhomes. Now Setauk Crescent number one is at 259 and now we're talking about a gas forced air system. You've got that same idea that we talked about on Childs earlier this week and same price as Childs. You've got some good upgrades in the kitchen. That island would come in handy and that little extra thing right here here would come in handy too and uh, you've got some upgraded flooring the bathrooms have been done I like the wood paneling down there for me that's a pretty cool feature and you've got to walk out to the backyard so for 15,000 more on a mortgage that's probably about 50 to 75 dollars a month and uh, and if you think about how much more it could cost you if you don't manage your electric baseboards right it may not be too bad 347 is the maintenance fee which is a little bit higher than some of the other ones in town and so that might be a consideration too so there's more to it than just your mortgage it's really looking at all the extra costs involved 604 Laurier uh, 329 and basically they're showing you one bad shot of the kitchen and a whole lot of bathrooms I don't know anyways it's a, there's nothing on the outside it looks like there's some weird things in the description here so basement can be rented and they talk about not warranting the retrofit it means it's not a legal basement apartment but oftentimes people still rent them out Garage has been converted to a family room, but can be easily returned to a garage. Well, it depends how comfortable someone is with work. So it would be something where you just, it seems like it's in the right price zone for sure. Uh, most of the ones on Laurier are between about 325 and 350, but you just want to maybe go check this one out. Unfortunately, I don't think the photos really represent the whole house, family room, master bedroom. You can't see any of that stuff. Short read 332. It's an Oxford or like a sumac corner. There's a small room down here, and then you've got your, your main living area on this floor, and then you've got three bedrooms upstairs plus one full bathroom and uh, looks like it's immediate possession. It's uh, a little bit more than 1350 square feet. Most of the times the agents are highballing. They're saying it's more than what it is. In this case, it's actually a little bit, uh, the actual square footage they've quoted a little bit lower than reality. All broad loom inside. They might get it. If it's really nice, they might get it. Uh, if it's not, I don't think they have a chance at 332. Van Fleet is an Emery model. It's at 369. Hardwood on the main floor, nice upgrades, good finishes. You've got the two pot lights even above the sink here. Uh, really popular floor plan. You've got two full bathrooms upstairs, and, uh, and, and I like the color choices. I think they've kept it simple. That's a laminate floor upstairs. It's a little different than the hardwood, but it looks like the color match is pretty good. And uh, yeah, just a good solid floor plan. We've seen them sell for this. I think these guys did a great job of pricing too. Uh, Pettigrew is at 369 semi-detached and, and the pictures look like they're compressed in it's like a hall of mirrors when you look at this one now it's extended out possibility maybe of having two cars side by side and uh, I don't know why they did I guess the the interlock or the uh, the pattern concrete is nice that's the front room it is actually wider than that it would feel wider than that but I, I don't know if that's the best way to present that room the kitchen feels bigger than this everything looks small so I hope this doesn't hurt them in their marketing I do think the price looks good I do know the model I've been inside it it's actually a pretty good size master bedroom and you've got a pretty good size uh, ensuite as well so it, it's actually not bad this one on Jervis 379 I looked at this and I thought, wow, that seems really low. These are a lot closer to 400 typically. And when you look inside, it's got great finishes. So I said, what's the catch? 
looked in the broker comments and it appears as though they're taking offers on a certain day. This one will sell for more than asking. That's the main floor right there. They've done a nice French door. And so this is a three-story home. It's got a double garage in the back. You don't really have a backyard, but you've got a patio above your garage, which serves basically as your backyard. Great finishes inside. The rooms are pretty decent. There's your uh, your patio above that double garage. And you can see just in the distance, there's another double garage with a patio that faces. They're back to back and there's a laneway access. This one is going to do very, very well. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if the first number ended up in a four. So be prepared to pay more than asking for this home. And I do believe that, that uh, th there is justification for that if you look at the historical sales. So nice listing. Really, really nice. If you're not, if if a, a yard isn't as important, if you're okay with a, a bit more stairs, this can be an excellent entry point to get that double car garage. Burrows Gate 3D4, and I don't think these guys have a shot really. It's it's uh, the it's 1130 square feet. It's an Amesbury or a Brennan model. One big open room. I do like the fact that they do have the island in the kitchen. I think that's definitely a good thing. Bedrooms are half decent. There's only one uh, full bathroom on the second floor. It's nice landscaping. They've done a good job in the basement here, plus an extra bathroom because not only having one upstairs, having another full bathroom in the house certainly helps. I just, you know, these models just don't sell for this, even with that finished basement. So I do like the home. I just don't know if the price is right. I would take that Emery model on Van Fleet in a heartbeat over this one. And, uh, and even finishing the basement in that home would put you in a much better place. So Brandon Terrace, 3D9. Brandon Terrace, you can't find it on Google Maps, but it's a, it's a little loop street that comes off of Maple and it's really close to the highway. So you will hear highway noise here. Uh, 3D9 is the price. The problem I have with this floor plan is you've got this one room here. This is all technically square footage, but you have to walk through it to get to the kitchen. So it's, it's in my eyes, it's kind of wasted space. We see, um, we see Cost Corp that's developed a similar kind of design over on Farmstead and stuff. I just, I'm not a big fan. The kitchen doesn't have a lot of flow into the family room. And so my personal preference is not towards that kind of layout. With the noise at 3D9, I don't know. It's just not really my thing. Uh, I think it might be a bit of a tricky sale. Zelensky is at 399. And so there's no photos on this one here. It's a Brent Grove, it's 1500 square feet. Uh, it's actually a really nice floor plan. There's laundry upstairs. The rooms are all pretty good size. Uh, it looks like a good quality laminate floor on the main floor. Seems a little high compared to what else is sold. Uh, you look at this one on Evans Terrace for the same price. It's an older home and it's 1580 square feet with a finished basement for basically the same price. Uh, you get a little bit more, um, you get an extra two or three feet width. So it's just the first phase that Mattamy put out and they were a little more generous with their lot sizes. Okay, so you go in the house here, you've got, that's the shot from the front door. And so if you went forward, you'd see there's a family room here. And then uh, there's the family room. The kitchen is bent over to the side here. And then there's a long room, which they have shown in the pictures here. That's the room there that you could use as a formal dining room. You could use it as a TV room. I've seen a lot of people configure these homes in different ways. And then you've got your uh, your kitchen there with your uh, your three bedrooms upstairs. No shots of the finished basement. There's a virtual tour that I haven't checked out. But 399, the same model as this one sold very recently for uh, it was it was in the 390s. So they're in they're in a good place. Evans has been a real hot street lately. Now you have to be careful because these homes are now over 10 years old. Uh, the roofs might need some work, and we've seen that quite a few times for for the Madme homes over 10 years old. A lot of problems with roofs, so be very careful with that one. Make sure you really get somebody good as your home inspector. Thompson is at 409. Fernridge, 1664 square feet, possibility of two car parking in the driveway. And it looks like there's, um, there's some decent upgrades. There's a laminate floor here. I don't know if I'm thrilled with the, the price on that one. Bennett is at 429. It's a Spring Ridge model. It's the smaller Spring Ridge, so it's 1717 square feet. Finished basement, you side onto green space, so there's no neighbors on that side. You've got a huge piece of property here. And so these guys are acting as their own listing agent. It's a mere posting is what we call it. Uh, you can still work with an agent to come and, uh, and put an offer on something like this. 
I, the lot is really a one of a kind. It's a nice looking lot. They might get this one. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they got a, a good price for it. It's just unique. And if you're selling privately and you're unique, you have a real advantage. So seller's path 434.9. We've seen a lot of these. I think there's maybe eight or nine of them for sale right now. So the market's a little bit flooded with the detached ones, three story with a du double garage in the back. Um, we mentioned the one on Jervis, the townhouse at 379. Uh, I just think that these ones can be a little tricky. They can take a little longer to sell, especially if there's a lot of them, the competition, there's just not that much demand because most people up in the 430s are looking for at least a backyard, but the pull can be the double car garage. To me, I think there's better options for the same price point. Uh, Yates is at 448. It's a semi-detached. It's uh, it's really got not very good marketing. The pictures are are not good at all. Um, I just it's got a finished basement. I, I'm just not seeing much here that that really is going to draw anyone in. Uh, we will four seventy four nine and same thing. The photos just don't do anything for this home. I I just yeah I you know here's the thing if the agent's not going to try hard to market it I find it very difficult to uh, to really push the listing pretty hard on uh, on daily homes Hepburn is a, a sterling model it's at forty four nine and very competitive you've got some good looking hardwood floors on a diagonal here uh, the the actual floor plan twenty one something it's the model above this just sold for five hundred thousand with similar upgrades. So these guys are going to do well. I, I remember even last year in the fall, we had one that sold at, at 480. These guys are, are, are doing great at that price. I think they're going to be uh, selling probably within a week or two. Guelph Line, 499. We're talking about 49.7 acres. And there's a lot to, uh, to know about vacant land. Really, the bank doesn't like to finance it. You need a rather substantial down payment. Uh, it says that this could be severed, that there's a certain amount that could be used for farming. So the things you always want to look at is the financing angle and also who has the jurisdiction over the land. Is there protected land? Is there things, are there areas you can't develop on? That affects the value of this, this uh, piece of property. To me, it actually looks like a pretty good deal. It's not that far north. And I think for that money to get 50 acres, it actually looks really good. So Laurier is at 529. Um, You've got a, a good looking kitchen here. Even the faucet's been upgraded. There's some pot lights in the breakfast and kitchen areas. One big open room. So your living and dining are combined here. Some people love that, some people not so much. And, uh, and then you've got your four bedrooms upstairs, some flooring upgrades in the upstairs. What I like about this one, it's a 115 foot lot. So we're almost, we're talking about old Milton size property here. Pool size, absolutely. And if you look at that very top of the picture, it almost looks like the house behind is is sort of twisted, like it's it could be the bend on a crescent. So you may not have a home directly behind you, it may be on an angle. And that could be a real good thing for privacy in addition to the extra depth. So I actually really like this one. I think it's good. Laurier can be busy on the front, but I'd be more concerned with having quiet in the back because that's where you're hanging out. About 2,100 square feet on that one. Fourth line, 574. It's got a 30 by 40 workshop in addition to actually a half decent looking home. The kitchen's been updated and uh, that's the master with a nice walkout outside. Uh, you've got some electric baseboard down in the basement there. Uh, but hey, there's a lot of good stuff about this home. It's on two acres. Uh, it says oil as the primary heat source. So it could just be that that one room gets a little bit cold and that's why it's got the baseboards. Nice stuff. Replaced windows on a home like this. Windows can cost a whole bunch of money. I like to see that. Homes Crescent Salisbury model, 3042 square feet at 689. Actually, a really nice looking kitchen here. Uh, the, the coloring, the light fixtures have all been done. You've got some extra upgrades on the floors upstairs. Huge shower there. And uh, I really like this one, the way this one's been staged. I think there's a lot of good things. The floor plan is, is one of my favorites in the escarpment area. And uh, 689 seems like a relatively fair price for this home. First line, 744. And there's no inside shots of this one. It's on 159 by 137 foot lot. So uh, probably about half an acre or so. Now what I do know is the people who worked on this home are, are upper echelon, really, really good decorators and builders and, and developers. So the, I have a feeling this one's gonna look terrific inside. Uh, for that price, it probably should because it's not a huge piece of land. 
not too far north or west, so it's actually pretty close to Milton, probably about 10, 12 minutes away from actually getting into uh, to town. Tux for this one was for sale for quite a long time. It's a, a Westmoreland, 3,700 square feet, plus a finished basement, five bedrooms upstairs. Every be bedroom has its own access to a bathroom. Uh, it's, a, it's a great floor plan. You get a wraparound deck here. The finished basement, at least in pictures, looked okay. It sides onto Trudeau, so a little bit of a busier road, and it backs onto the, uh, to the gas line. So there's green space protected behind it. Listed last year in a market that was actually really tough on, on these models, and even the 700 range was tough. This year we've seen a couple sales in the 800, so there might be enough juice there to, uh, to get these guys finally sold. I've heard that this home has a, a very strong odor to it, so that might be something to uh, to consider. But I think the actual value on paper is definitely there with this home. And actually the same model with a finished basement backing onto a pond was one of those ones that sold over eight. So they've actually put a bit of a discount in here too. Um, that's a good listing. That's a hot listing, I think. If you can if you can get some of that smell out, if it does exist, from what I've heard, then you're probably in awesome shape. Fleming 785, 3,200 square feet plus a finished basement. This is one of those properties, 3,200 square feet. That's a lot of space, but it doesn't look like it from the photos. It just it, everything just doesn't seem big and spacious. But it is a good floor plan. I think Green Park was the builder here. And uh, you've got your five bedrooms here, not a premium lot. So 785 without any sort of premium attached to it, any privacy, any huge yard might be a little tricky for these guys. Uh, fifth line, 829. And we've got 15 acres on this one. Big, see this looks big. And I like how they've matched the countertops to uh, to the wall color on this one. Uh, you've got Ward and June Cleaver's beds in, this, uh, in the bedroom there. Uh, Nice size piece of land. Again, not too far from Milton. It's basically between Guelph and 25. It's on fifth line and uh, looks like a good piece of land. Three garages. E29 actually isn't a bad price. August 15th, 2012. Whenever we see a date like that, we can generally assume that that has some meaning. Probably the sellers have a next step and that's an, a, a good date to, uh, to get on a closing. So if you can give them that date, there's a possibility maybe on a win-win negotiation that they might help you out somewhere else. So that's the list for today. If you have any questions, give us a call. Like I said in the video, if you want to, uh, to meet us at Starbucks, definitely do that. But in the meantime, if you're not ready for that, enjoy the videos. Have a great day.